Welcome to Better Preparedness. On today's episode, this is a bit of a two-part episode. So today is a bit more of the unboxing and tomorrow is going to be analysis of these kits. And do I think they're worth it? I think they're worth it as a really good starting point. They're never perfect. No, no kit is perfect. So we'll go into that in part two. Right now we're going to focus on unboxing a, an emergency kit. This is something you can order from Amazon or maybe from a local store. And in this instance, this is the May Day Earthquake Kit Deluxe home, Honey Bucket Four Person Survival Kit. So that's a lot to unpack. But let's take a look. First of all, we need to cut this open. So this is what you get from the store. It'll come in a cardboard box. And hopefully this doesn't sit in your house just as is because I really, really recommend that you take these things apart, look at what there is, look at what there isn't, and make sure you do some looks throughs. But they're fairly heavy, I have to admit. I think on the website it lists that as about uh, 21 pounds or about probably about eight and a half kilos but right off the bat what you see if you try to open it is you get a toilet seat there's logic to that okay so keep that in mind there's a toilet seat here we put that to the side i'm going to unpack this as it came and we'll see what comes out of here so first of all we have remember this is a four person emergency kit. These are sort of breathing dust masks. Again, we're not talking sort of medical grade, but in a pinch, uh, they would do fairly well, I guess. There is one pair of work gloves, just one. There is a wind-up battery emergency flashlight, the FM radio, so something useful. With a flashlight could be something more immediate. The radio and things is probably more longer term, depending on the type of crisis. I'm just going to have to just spread this out, so don't be surprised if this gets a bit bulky on here. All right, now we have Mylar Survival Rescue Blankets. I'll put a link up above to a whole video I did on Mylar Blankets. Very useful, super useful in so many contexts. Now we have a roll of duct tape. I'm going to come up here so you can see. In this roll of duct tape, there is a thing of water purifying stuff. I'm not sure this is in focus. So I may have to come back here. So there's water purifying tablets. There are a bunch of cleansing towelettes. My favorite, a roll of duct tape. And there are some waterproof matches. So you know, useful pieces of stuff. And then we have all right. These kits certainly have some stuff that is subject to expiring. And we'll talk about that and we'll go into the details, especially in part two. But right now, I just kind of want to give you a fast video of a run through of what's in one of these kits. So in this, there are, remember this is a four person kit. There are four of these and each of these contains little pouches. I think they're 125 milliliters of water. And then you get this little plastic bag that it's contained in. It has a spout here because this is, I guess, refillable. So you could transport water if you had access to some water. Again, these are just little pouches. I think each of these, it's listed as three or four pouches per day. We're talking, <laughs> that's, you're into survival mode if you're doing that. But this bag has a five-year shelf life from time of production. Remember, time of production is different from when you actually receive it. So keep in mind those things. We have a miniature first aid kit. What do you get in that first aid kit? Well, you get, let's see, in this one there's some burn gel. You get some aspirin, single antibiotic ointment, some antacid. And we're talking very, very, very small portions here. There is a minor first aid kit with some bandages and so on. And in that you get some antiseptic towelettes, cotton swabs, some bandages, and there is a small first aid CPR info thing. Um, so yeah, relatively useful. There's also a survival to five-in-one whistle, 
It's got a few things. It's got a little compass. Not, not sort of navigation grade, but tells you which way is north and south. There's a whistle. There's a signaling mirror, storage container, and flint. So, you know, for what it's worth, it's reasonable. I could have used this to actually open the box, but this is a box cutter, a knife cutter. So one of these blades, useful to have. And there are four, the other one's in here probably somewhere. There are four emergency rain ponchos. Again, useful if you're caught outside. Keep in mind that this kit could be used in a sort of sudden emergency, like an earthquake, or it could be a protracted one, say one that develops and maybe you have to relocate. So you could be using this at home or outside if your structure has been destroyed or something like that. There is one glow stick, one glow stick. I think you'd probably want more. And it does claim it to be a 12 hour green glow. We'll see about that. Now, one of the things about these kits is you'll see there are food rations. These food rations, as you'll see, are listed as sort of Coast Guard approved, US Coast Guard approved. I think you'll find this may help keep you alive, but you may not enjoy that time if this is all you have to rely on. And we're gonna talk about that in part two, because I really think it's important that you review what's in here and increase and improve on what there is. So yes, you can keep these. They do have a shelf life. So then they do have an expiry date on them. So make sure the shelf life, I think from production is about five years. You're not gonna have a romantic, enjoyable, evening meal with these. So just take these out of the box. You also get a crowbar, crowbar, pry bar. I think this is useful if you ever have a door that's jammed shut and you can't get it open because of maybe an earthquake or a shift or whatever reason, this could be very useful to have with you. I think you're more likely to require this if you're in your living quarters or your bedroom after hours and you're kind of caught off guard and this could be the, what helps you get to your children's room or get out of your room if the door is wedged shut. And there is a multi-emergency tool. This from my firefighting days uh, is fairly useful. It has a number of applications. You can use it for, for digging if you're having to try to pull something out. There are water and gas shutoff, so it's often known as a multi-tool for water and gas shutoff. You can use this for various applications. So again, you may have to be creative in an emergency, but this may be something that gives you a bit of diversity in terms of your tools. Now let's get back to this toilet seat. One of the things is if you have a shutoff of resources, like water and your plumbing doesn't work or you're having to relocate or you're out of your house in an emergency situation, you may not have access to a toilet. With this, you do actually have a toilet. That's why the lid of the bucket is actually a toilet seat. I do like the fact that you get these toilet bags. So there are 12 toilet bags. You would put the bag inside the bucket and that means you can close that up. You can probably get a bit, bit of a better seal because you'll have the plastic bag up here. And I do like the fact that, you know, one of the things is if you're feeling miserable in a crisis or a disaster, and at least you have some way to relieve yourself and everything, and you can transport this and have a little bit of privacy for wherever you need to take it. You also get this toilet de deodorant, I think it's called. Should you get one of these? That's a very good question. I think you should. I think they're a great starting point for a kit that could help you. Now keep in mind, it's not gonna be probably necessarily all this kit that is going to help you. It could be certain items. It could be other items you have around your house. Now you're not gonna have a fire extinguisher in here. You're not gonna have batteries to power your phones. Keep in mind, you can add to this. These food things, these bricks, Hopefully you can hear that. <laughs> These bricks, you may want to take them out. You may want to leave them in and have them as absolute last case scenario. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you watch part two where I talk about
the merits, the pros and cons of these kits, and I fundamentally do think they are a good starting point. They're not the end point, they're a good starting point for preparedness. Thanks for watching Better Preparedness.